and I apologize uh, for doing this in, uh, in English and not Chinese, but hopefully that is educational and part of the track. So in the wrong language, I've been told I have seven minutes to um, convince the, let's see if these slides work. I have seven minutes to convince the teachers that the, um, the Well, I have seven minutes to convince all of the teachers here um, as to what I think should be the most important addition to school curricula. Um, I have seven minutes to convince all of the students here um, what their future career should be. Um, and I, we did this in, um, in Hong Kong. Um, how do I go backwards? Uh, we did this in Hong Kong, but we hope um, this uh, this project would work in, in Guiyang, Guizhou, in, in, in all of the world. Um, and, um, so this is going the right way now. Um, so, um, in the 21st century, um, is, that, is that working? So, we, we all appreciate the, how important it is to, to have skills with, with mathematics, with maths. Um, you know, it's been taught in schools a long time. Um, we're at a big data summit. Um, we should all, uh, you know, increasingly understand how important it is to learn IT, to, to learn about computers in schools. But the next stage from mathematical literacy and digital literacy um, that we all, I, I believe, need to know is genetic literacy or specifically genomic literacy. Um, why this is important? Well, we need this information, all of us need this information to be able to make informed decisions on your health, um, when you want to start a family, even if you go shopping to the market and buy fruit and vegetables. Um, a lot of you should know the story about Angelina Jolie and the decisions she had to make when she was uh, discovered to have a breast cancer mutation. But healthcare in the 21st century will increasingly, we will have to, any disease, we will have to make these types of decisions. Um, if people saw the previous part of the, the track, you know, uh, BGI has sequenced three million unborn children um, in, just in China. And um, a lot of people are scared of the word DNA. Um, people are worried about genetically modified organisms and stuff. And we need, we need some level of education to understand the consequences of all of these things for good and, and, and for bad. Um, so, and for the students here as well, if you want one piece of advice on your future career, we're here in a big data summit and the genomics community, we, we believe we have the biggest data of all. Um, there are, people have, have um, People have logged and, and studied the, the, growth of, uh, the, the, the growth of genomics data and is predicted to overtake astrophysics, even streaming internet, UQ, YouTube. So if um, the students here want to be guaranteed of a job for the rest of your, rest of your lives, you should all become genomics data experts. And it's not just uh, big you know, centers like BGI, huge, huge sequencing uh, companies. Um, we can do this now, it has been democratized um, where we can hold the DNA sequences in our hands. Um, if you've seen the program Star Trek, they have handheld medical uh, devices called tricorders. And we have these now with handheld DNA sequences called nanopores. They even have one that can plug into your iPhone and stream this data. They used it in uh, fighting the Ebola crisis in Africa, in Brazil, fighting Zika. And we will soon have mobile apps where you can test your sushi or your Chinese medicine to see if it's real. This, this will be apps soon. And so these, this is progressing so quickly, it's affecting all of our lives, but it doesn't get coverage in the media. A lot of people are unaware of how important this, this is. So in Hong Kong, we try to think of a project to engage and teach the Hong Kong, uh, the Hong Kong people ab 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 about the genomics that is happening. And we were inspired by um, this flower here. I don't know if you recognize it. It's a beautiful flower called Bohemia Blakiana, and it's the, the symbol of Hong Kong. It, it's our emblem. 
You see it on our flag, you see it on Hong Kong money, you see it on Hong Kong stamps. And emblems are very important. They, they um, you know, symbolize something ab about ourselves. And we thought this would be an interesting um, angle in genomics, particularly because when we were looking at it, we realized it's a very, very strange emblem. It should not exist. It's a sterile hybrid. Every single Hong Kong Bohemia is a clone of the original Bohemia that was uh, collected 130 years ago. So we don't really understand where, what its parents are, where, where it came from. So we thought this was a good, we thought this was a good challenge to teach people about genetics, about genomics. And through that, we launched the Hong Kong Bohemia Genome Project. If, um, if you can understand, if you can work and understand complicated plant genomes, then things like cancer is uh, easy in comparison. So we, um, we crowdfunded this, so we got the public to, to collect money. We sequenced it in Hong Kong, we studied it in Hong Kong, got students in Hong Kong to actually work on this project and teach themselves about genomics. Um, it was an educational project. We went out, we're telling the community, we went on CNN, we were on BBC Earth, we got plant genomics on the front page of the Hong Kong newspapers, and even did TED Talk. Year olds. Everybody had really interesting questions. We did DNA extractions with them, told them about this process. We even worked with seven-year-olds, showing that anybody can be a genomicist, anybody can do this work. With the seven-year-old students, we extracted DNA together. We went and found Bohemia flowers. We're collecting data on how they were flowering. Anybody can participate in this. Anybody in this room can be a genomicist. Um, we created lots of teaching materials. These are all open teaching materials that any teachers can use. And it teaches you about big data as well. We made the data open, and there are online platforms that even school, high school students can use, access the top supercomputers in America, and they will teach you how to assemble genomics data. Um, we got uh, university students to work on this project, and they assembled, taught themselves with this data, and figured out what the parent, what the father and mother flower species were. They studied Chinese medicine, they studied loads of amazing things, and they did all of this themselves. They took the project, this, they, they, they led the project themselves. And um, you don't have to even be at school or university to do this. Any citizen can be a, a genomis, genomicist. We, there's a growing citizen science movement. We can all be scientists. In Hong Kong, there are a group of biohackers, a group of DIY biologists. Um, this summer, they are doing a bug hunt, collecting insects to uh, sequence the DNA and study the biodiversity across all of Hong Kong, hopefully find things that nobody had ever found before. And so uh, hopefully this shows that we can all be citizen scientists, we can all be community genomicists. Um, even, even here in, in, in Guizhou, um, for example, you have the Guizhou salamander. It's unique, only lives in Guizhou. Here's a, here's a project we could do, everybody here could do now. Um, so I, I, you know, I ask you to em embrace your emblems, embrace your biodiversity. Um, learning about these things teaches you something really important about yourself and will help you in the 21st century. I hope that was seven minutes. Thank you. Shusha.